Let's create a table and use it in a tulip app. First we have our app, which we've called tulip table, and we want to add a table to this and start interacting with it. So we go to the tables section under apps, and we can create a new table here. Click the create table button and, and give it a name. You should also give it a description. When we find our table, and we open it up, we can add new fields. You can have as many fields as you want, and they can have different types. They can have text, integers, numbers, boolean, a whole list of different things, images and videos. You can access any of these fields from your table, from your application. So let's label this one my text field, and let's also give it a number field, my number field. You can give these things descriptions as well if you'd like to. You can also add queries and aggregations or upload CSVs to this table to make things easier. You can create records directly from here if you'd like. So let's create a record and let's call it, uh, so every record has to have a unique identity. Uh, you can generate these automatically with your application, but we'll just give this one one. The next one will say my text and then we'll give it a number like 50. So now we've created a record. Back in our application, using the uh, table, is there's a couple ways to do it. So if you want to display the table, you can click on the Embed button and press Interactive Table. You can drag this thing wherever you want it. You can format it as you'd like, and you can select the data source. We're going to choose the Tulip Table, which is my new table. And now you have to choose which columns you want to display. You don't have to display them all. You can resize them if you'd like. Some fields come automatically, like when was it created, the record, when was it updated. We're going to include the ID, the number field, and the text field. You can resize these if you want to, and you can also reorder them by dragging them around. So I can reorder these all I want. You can put filters on them. So if I wanted to say filter only uh, records where the number field is greater than 50 or whatever, you can do that. You can also filter it by variables within your application. So a lot of, a lot you can do here. You can sort them as well. You can add a select button on the left to show people that they can select these. You can also put the row index if you want to put the number there. You can change how many rows there are, so we'll put a hundred rows here. And you can even add triggers so when someone clicks on it, something happens. But that's not all we want to do because we may want to actually interact with the element in this. If I click on this, I can't actually do anything at this point because I need a record placeholder. So we go over here to the records tab, add a table, and we're going to select my new table as the table that will be connected to this app. And we'll add a record placeholder, which is current record. Add the record placeholder. So now we can actually select this placeholder here. So when I click on one of these things, the value can be used in my app logic. So you can select text, table record, and you can display the record that's been selected right here. You can do it simply by just selecting the entire table and you can choose which, which elements you want to show as well as how many columns there are. You can change their labels. This is an easy way to make it so you can see your table values. Or you can just insert a table record and just show one of the fields. So you can select just the ID column if you'd like to, and it'll show that. So that's how that works. If we go into the, uh, and, and test this, or we run it in the player, which we're gonna use the player here, you can search for your application, and you'll see that we have selected this. If I click on this here, it'll populate here. So now I've been able to view table records within my application but maybe I want to actually create a record as well. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff here. Let's give an input value of text. Let's give a button. And this button's going to be create record. So this button's going to create a table record for us within our table. So the trigger is going to be create record. And what we'll do is we'll scroll down to table records, we'll create a record or create or load a record. I like to create or load by ID. Now, like I said, IDs have to be unique. You can make this an expression. This way they're always unique. I'll make it a random string. 
into the current record, and then I'll store a value as well. So what value do I want to store? I want to store this value here. This is currently a variable. I'm going to give this variable a value, like a, a I'm going to create a variable here called my input. So now this equals my input. When I push this record, what I want it to do is store that value to the new record. So I'm going to store the variable, which is my input, into the table record, current record, my text field. So now, if I were to run this, I could type in a value, press create record, and you'll see I'm creating table records 